It's been said that your emotions are a wonderful servant, but they're a very terrible master. Why is it that emotions so often get a tight grip on our lives? And rather than us controlling our emotions, very often our emotions control us. On this edition of Truth for a New Generation, we're going to talk about three of the most potentially toxic emotions when they're out of control, and we're going to talk about how our emotions can be stabilized and we can benefit from them and control them rather than they controlling us. Stay tuned for this very special edition of Truth For A New Generation. In the Bible, in Proverbs 16, 32, the Word of God says that whoever can control his anger is stronger than a mighty man, and whoever can control his spirit is stronger than a fortified city. Hi, Alex McFarland here. Welcome to this edition of Truth For A New Generation. Uh, you know, when it comes to emotions, very often, even the best of us, we lose control sometimes. And very often our emotions control us. And nowadays people talk about individuals getting triggered. And so we're going to talk about really, biblically, what God's Word says about emotions and how your emotions, your feelings can become your servant, not your master. I've often thought about that verse, the Proverbs 16, 32 verse, that, you know, when you think about a fortified city in the ancient world, very strong, impenetrable. When you think about a mighty man, a warrior, uh, peak physical condition, total control. And yet the Bible says the, the strongest person is the one who is able to control themselves. To, to be able to uh, have mastery over your feelings. And whether it's an impulse buy at a store or going into debt for something you don't need, or whether it's losing your temper or, or, or digressing into just an attitude that you know is destructive, we really have the obligation and the calling, I believe, uh, for obedience to God and for the way we treat others, and frankly, for the way that we steward ourselves, we have an obligation to master our emotions rather than have our, uh, our emotions master us. Now, when I was in my late 30s, I was asked to be the president of a seminary and a Bible college, and at one time I was said to be the youngest seminary president in America for a season of my life. And, you know, the job of a seminary president is really two jobs. One, to raise money, and the other, to grow the school and the student body. And uh, I found myself at, at a young age uh, over three dozen faculty and several hundred students, and the Lord blessed in many ways. But I was being interviewed, and somebody asked me, what's it like to be a, a seminary president? And I said, well, the job of a seminary president is to keep three dozen PhDs from killing each other. And later on, some of my staff said, why did you say that? Uh, you implied that these, these PhDs are high maintenance, and they're, you know, they're divas. And I said, well, that's because they're high maintenance and they're divas. And look, with all due respect for the academics uh, that were in my life at that period, I realized there are some emotions that even highly educated, polished people, adults, ostensibly mature adults, maybe along the course of all the achievements, there are some things regarding their emotions they needed to attend to. Now, I want to talk about what I call the evil trio, the evil trio, fear, pride, and anger. You think about those things, fear, pride, and anger. If you put a lot of thoroughbreds in a barn, they're going to kick at each other. And that's kind of how it was managing a school. And, you know, when I've shared stories like this, people that are in education or they deal with highly accomplished individuals, they can relate to what I'm saying. But all of, all of us know what it is to feel fear. But if fear metastasizes into like paranoia, and you really don't trust anybody, and you're always thinking the worst, that can be a very toxic mindset. And then there's pride. 
Now, now it's okay to have a healthy self-esteem. In fact, you should be okay with who you are and self-esteem. But pride and arrogance and cockiness that is always causing you to be in this competitive mode and to always think you're better than others, that's not healthy. And then, of course, anger. And nowadays we hear so much about people getting triggered and we have terms like road rage. And uh, they talk about in the stores, you know, when, when a customer just goes off on a clerk and they, they jokingly talk about the Karens of the world. If your name is Karen, please forgive me. But that it, it deals with people that are controlled by anger. And so what I want to talk about in this program, and we've got a very wonderful interview with a a counselor who has spent her life helping people with their emotions. And then later on, I'm going to really tie a bow on this and give you some practical things you can begin to implement today to help let your emotions serve you, let your emotions enrich your life, but not let your emotions control you. Even if you've been in some bad cycles of emotional habits for years, you can start fresh today. And that's what we'll talk about on this edition of Truth for a New Generation. God has a purpose to train you in what you're called to do. And I tell you, Karis Bible College is the place for that. Man, if you want a life change, come to Karis. Come on to Karis. You need to take a step of faith and start believing God for something big. God made every one of you for something special. The next two to three years could be the most powerful time of your life. Welcome back to Truth For A New Generation. We're talking about controlling emotions rather than having emotions control us. And somebody who has helped millions do that, and she's blessed listeners and lives in so many ways, my own life included, is June Hunt. June Hunt is the internationally syndicated broadcaster of Hope for the heart, but she's done so many things in her amazing career. At a time when uh, syndicated radio was largely a male-dominated field, she was a pioneer female broadcaster with one of, if not the first, uh, nationally syndicated Christian radio show led by uh, a woman. And she has sung at Billy Graham Crusade. She uh, entertained the troops years ago with the USO, and she's a published author. She's created a lot of curriculum for Christian counseling and training Christian counselors. There's a lot I could say, but I want you to meet our very special guest from Hope for the Heart, June Hunt. June, thanks for being with us. I'm honored to be with you. Thank you. And you are in Texas, I'm assuming, right? Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and yeah. That, now you you are a Texan. You grew up there, right? I did. Yeah. How did you get into, if, if you want to give a little groundwork for all that you do and how you got into it, tell us about that. Well, um, I, I know what it's like to not have certain things, like uh, no knowledge of the Bible, no uh it, it was it was strange i very candidly i grew up uh, with a fictitious last name um my father had three families going on at the same time and it was very painful and i was not verbal at all i didn't know how to talk uh how, nobody had my situation that i could tell and so um i had a lot of questions thank god i had the privilege of coming into a life changing relationship with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, uh, but I didn't even understand. I needed help. I, I needed an Alex McFarland to help me understand how do you, I, I don't know, you know, but Jesus, um, it, he, he, he can't, he, how do you have a relationship? What do you mean relationship with Christ? And so I came without knowledge. Now there's an advantage of that. <laughs> and that is that I know where a lot of people are and they're sincere like me. And sincerely wrong too, like me. And so, um, but I, I knew a, a whole lot about, um, I grew up in an adulterous home. So I have great compassion because I adored my mother. I adored her. But it was a very imbalanced situation of a dad who's uh, double her age and very controlling. And we had no choices. And there was abuse and, you know, just all kinds of things. So, I know what it's like, and I can feel the pain 
of callers. Um, I do a nighttime call-in counseling program called Hope in the Night. And at, at times I have chills just thinking because I can relate. And it's not, it's not just theory, it's not uh, words. It, it, it is uh, truth known by experience of how Jesus makes a difference in our lives. And because there are so many fabulous principles, uh, truths in the Bible, most people don't know those. And so we mind the scriptures. We meaning uh, there was a point at which we started a ministry. I, I was asked, it, I was always just asked. I did, it wasn't my idea. So, um, and I thought, well, I don't know if there's a need for a radio program. What do you mean? Uh, and so then the people that I would talk to uh, who had kept coming to me to do something, um, I launched out, but I kind of felt like Noah, just kind of, <laughs> being told what to do. And, uh, but there was a huge void of practical material. Alex, I could not find material on domestic violence. I'm talking about Christian material on childhood sexual abuse, on so many topics, there was not Christian material on it. And I don't love writing, but there was a need. And um, yeah, so, so I, we developed uh, about 100 topics of definitions, characteristics, causes, and solutions because there was a void, there was a need. And it's um, amazing. That's the only reason that we're in 36 languages throughout the world, um, in 60 countries, et cetera. But uh, it, it's because it's not me. And I, I, I want to emphasize this it's not me, it's the material. It, it is, it's God's truth. For today's problems and so I think the issue is you speak for a lot of youth I became a youth director right after college and I couldn't believe that I was being asked to do this and I had 600 in the junior high division first wow that, that would be the, the largest youth group in America today <laughs> well it was huge and and then I later was college and career director so God just introduced me to all these areas of need, and I, I, uh, I knew what it was like back then to not be verbal and not know how to think. And this is one of your fortes, Alex. It well, is you, helping you know, June, people learn how to think. June, as I hear your journey, and, and I know we've got people watching this that have various hurts and various things they're trying to process through, but as you came to the Lord and your own wounds and issues were getting worked out, therein was an opportunity, not only to grow in the Lord personally, but to serve others. And it was an opportunity where you, now in retrospect, you've touched millions of lives. Talk to people about how challenges and pain actually may be a glorious opportunity. That is a fabulous question because my only question not of God. It's just like, I just said, how can a loving God allow someone to cause so much pain, to so many people, that would be my father. How, how, how could that be? Now, I wasn't asking God. I just, I was being posed with becoming a Christian. And there was a point at which um, what it was that drew me was the testimony of others. I saw they had something I needed. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was information. No, I mean, yes, they had information, but they had transformation inside out and I was compelled. So the point is, it, I had no idea how God would use what you're saying. This is exactly what you're saying, Alex. I, as a person who journeyed through those very tough times, I was so angry. I wanted to kill my father. And for the right reason, I thought. <laughs> um, my mom said, no, June, that's really, that won't be necessary. But it was logical to me. I'm very logical. I'm math. I love logic. And uh, yet I, it, it, when life doesn't make sense, there is one who created us and he will make sense of it. And that means that when you look at scripture, um, I didn't know scripture, but the Bible did say, does say, all things work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So the point is, if he can make all things work together for good, the good is I can identify. I, it, it's like this. 
sympathy is nice. It's like patting a little kid on the head. Um, sympathy is right to have at times, but sympathy says, I'm sorry you're hurt. Empathy says, I'll hurt with you. Compassion says, I'll hurt with you and I'll be there for you until the hurt is gone. Jean, isn't that so, what the Lord says for all of us? Yes, yes. And once you find that you can have a life-changing relationship with Christ, and I didn't even know that that was possible. So I, I needed to later share that it is possible for you to have Christ in you. That's what the Bible says. I thought, what do you mean Christ in you? Yes, we receive him as our personal Lord and Savior, and you don't have to understand why. I think that's why the first scripture that most, it seems like most people get introduced to makes such sense. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. I could not understand. How could a horrible dysfunction, how could so, so much pain and woundedness take place? And why, why, why would God allow this? Don't lean on your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he's going to direct your path. He's going to, to give that reference. You to be there. June, I want to give that reference, uh, folks, uh, unless you uh, were not aware, that's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, mm -hmm. which my wife and I have uh, inscribed that in the Bible of hundreds of young people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. That's a profound truth of life. June, I want to ask you this. As you've trained so many people to become counselors, and you've created fantastic curriculum. By the way, first, before we go too much farther, give your website, June. How, how may people find you on the web? It's hopefortheheart.org. That's all, hopefortheheart.org. So today, 21st century versus when you began, are the counseling needs different? And, and if so, what's changed about the, the emotional needs of the modern world? The needs are universal around the world. And I had to learn that when I started speaking in Russia and Romania and the former Soviet Union. And I was stunned, they were identical. Uh, and that was in the 1990s. Uh, and and uh, that's why we are uh, we have all these translated uh, and are asked. We don't go tell people, oh, you need them. They just find out we have what we have. But the point is the difference. And it's, a, it's an excellent question because the, the game changer, if you will, for good, for bad, both, is uh, the 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 media it is it is uh, the internet um there it, it uh, for example sexual addiction it's a, it's a snap anyone can become sexually addicted uh by accessing all the free easy to obtain uh graphic images that are part of sexual addiction and so and then people think they they can't get over it that it keeps coming back well there if you explain that when there's something highly graphic that is very dramatic or traumatic uh, from the adrenal gland comes adrenaline and it goes to the bloodstream and stamps the picture into the brain. And so many people, even pastors have said, I, I don't know what to do. You know, I, I, can't, I feel like I'm sinning. No, you're not sinning just because the image comes back. It's what you do when the image comes back because it's going to come back. And this is why we want prevention, but sometimes it's too late. There's so much that has already taken place in a person, but it's not too late. In other words, it's what you do now. And this is where people need help and hope. And I think the parallel passage, I just thought of it this way until just, I've not thought of it until just now. Uh, yes, there's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, lean not on your own understanding, but let me do a corollary. Jeremiah 29, 11 is huge. This is God speaking. He says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So you don't have to see where he's going to put you, lead you, guide you, and fill you, what he's going to put into you 
you've got to have truth though. You need wisdom. You need to hear people who are gifted, like specifically Alex, he's going to help you learn how to not just think, but then what to do. And, and I think it's vital to make uh, sure that we are, number one, we trust in the Lord. Yes, in, you, that means you entrust your life. And whatever he says, you say, okay, I don't feel like doing it, but I will do it. You, and it's a, life is a series of choices. I say that often. Life is a series of choices. For you, you, you can know that at times you don't want to choose something. You'd rather feel good by doing this, and yet that feel good activity brings a lot bring. of regret. I, yeah. Hey, hey right. June, we, we've only got about uh, a little less than a minute. Uh, one, one final question for anyone watching, and maybe they've gone through um, almost unimaginable pain or abuse circumstances. Um, tell, tell them that, yes, there is hope. The Bible does present not only hope, but he heals the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. That is his promise in, in the Psalms. He heals your broken heart and saves you when you are crushed in spirit. He literally is the healer and he will use your pain with a purpose. He uses any pain that we have with his purpose for your life. Give us your website one more time, if you would. It is hopefortheheart.org. Uh, June Hunt, hopefortheheart.org. We've got to visit again very soon. Thank you for all that you do. Thanks for being on today. God bless you. Folks, stay tuned. Truth for a New Generation is uh, back right after this. I just returned from a conference at The Cove, and it was absolutely breathtaking in every way. The mountain views, the tranquil areas within the woods, and just being alone with God. Morning spent watching the sunrise from a rocking chair with coffee in one hand and my Bible in the other. Evening spent reflecting on the incredible spiritual teaching. It's the embodiment of peacefulness. Come and experience the co for yourself. Throughout history, people have recognized the power of emotions. Emotions can build us up, inspire us, motivate us. Emotions can tear down and destroy and crush us can't they? You know, on Truth for a New Generation, we love quotes. We quote a lot of people. One of the people that we've quoted quite a bit is a great English historian, Arnold Toynbee. And Toynbee said this about the, the growth of the modern world, technology changing, the breakdown of the family. He said, mankind's prospects for survival were considerably better when we were defenseless against tigers, but now in the modern world, we seem defenseless against ourselves. Isn't that something? Benjamin Franklin, also who we quote quite a bit on the program, he said this. He said, whatever begins in anger usually ends in shame. Maybe today you are a person that, uh, if you're honest deep within yourself, you wish you could control your emotions. People get triggered, people fly off, and you may wonder, what emotions and counseling, what does that have to do with biblical worldview and apologetics? Because we often think about, you know, apologetics deals with evidence, history, science, archaeology, all of those things. But listen, truth is personal, okay? And if truth doesn't have the power to really improve our lives and, and help shape us, you know, what, what good is it? I would submit to you that biblical truth does have the power to help us in life. And while we could go for hours and hours on what I believe is the compelling evidence for the ver veracity of the Bible, the trustworthiness of the Bible, I believe the scripture is of divine origin and yes, is the word of God. Okay, that being the case, what does it have to say to us? Well, the Bible says in Psalm 147, verse 3, that God heals the brokenhearted. God bandages their wounds. And the word wounds in the original language really can mean sorrows. If you're a person with some sorrows, God can heal you. God can reach inside your soul. Not only forgive your sin, God can help heal your emotions. He really can, if you ask him. And we've often said, 
how in Matthew 6, 8, the Bible says the Father knows what we need even before we ask. Now, in Psalm 34, 17 through 20, the Bible says that God hears the righteous when they cry for help. The Lord delivers them out of their troubles. The Lord is near, Psalm 34. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, saves those who are crushed in spirit. You know, oftentimes behind our smiles and behind our, you know, big grown up together lives, there are a lot of people that are hurting. And you need to know whether it is, as we said, the evil trio, whether it is fear, you don't need to be afraid. God is with you if you'll allow him to be. Pride, humble yourself before God. You know, pride says, I don't need God. Humility says, I don't need anything but God. And then if there's anger, ask the Lord to help you overcome that. Because you might think you've suffered injustices, but God suffered the greatest injustice of all. His son was crucified. And as we film this, it's Good Friday where, in which we commemorate that. And so let the Bible... I think about John, I think about Colossians that says God is very near to those that are of a broken heart. Your emotions can be fixed, let's just say it, but it begins with us laying ourselves before God and saying, God, I need you to heal me and I'm willing to let you do that. I hope you'll turn to God today and let him have your emotions. My beliefs aren't exactly popular. You can tell me I'm on the wrong side of history all you want, but you won't change my mind. That's because I'm standing on something that doesn't change. Therefore, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. As Christians, it's important to remember that no matter how good or bad things may seem, nothing changes our King or our call. Hey, thanks for watching and listen up. Let's talk a little bit about the ministries of Truth for a New Generation. You know, this show is able to go forth and the radio shows that we do seven days a week because of the prayers and financial support of faithful folk like you. And I want to tell you how you can be a part of what this ministry is doing to touch millions of lives throughout the Western Hemisphere and beyond. But I do want to remind you to watch the exciting podcast, I Hear You, myself and our dear friend, Reverend Odell Cleveland, I hear you, Y-A dot show. You can hear this anywhere you listen to podcasts. Tell people about it. It's growing. Odell and I are doing a lot of media appearances. And I think the I Hear You podcast is touching a lot of lives. So help us spread the word about that. And regarding support for this program, hey, if you would give a tax-deductible support gift of at least $50, I'm going to send you two books, two of our biggest selling books, The God You Thought You Knew, Exposing Ten Common Myths About Christianity. Interviewed many 20-somethings, millennials, their questions, their objections to the Christian faith. Then my interviews with three dozen prominent atheists, 10 Answers for Skeptics. We answer 70 questions, actually more than 70, of atheists, agnostics, people that doubt the existence of God. These two books are yours for a gift of at least $50. If you could make that gift at least $75, we'll include the awesome Truth for a New Generation t-shirt, very cool, very retro, better living through apologetics. You'll dig it. Please let us hear from you today. And let me just encourage you to get our newsletter. Go on the website, alexmcfarland.com, alexmcfarland.com. We've got conferences coming up, a lot going on, broadcast events, publishing to bring the world to a knowledge of God and his word. Thanks for watching and for your prayers and support.